Okay, so this is the part two video of living abroad. Is there anything I wish I would have brought with me that I didn't bring with me? Well, I was convinced when I was left, I'm like, they will not have things I'm used to, like, you know, ibuprofen, Tylenol, cough medicine, um, feminine products, you name it. They're not going to probably have it, so I must pack all of it with me and bring it because, goodness knows, I might need, I don't know, paper clips, and they might not have them where I'm going. <gasps> the truth is, <laughs> guess what? They have paper clips. They have... They have feminine products, way more options than you have in the States. I'm like, I have not really felt that I need any of those things. Now, the things that I have missed from the States, though, are top bill. I miss Luden's cough drops. They do not have Luden's cough drops over here. So I brought a giant bag of Luden's cough drops with me, and I still have a few in that bag, not a lot, but a few. But if there's something that I miss, I would say it's Luden cough drops and Sucret cough drops. You know those, those numbing ones? They don't have those here either. So I'm like, if you do come to Asia, those are some things you might want to bring. The other things that you might want to bring medical-wise is they do not have extra strength ibuprofen or extra strength Tylenol our extra strength headache Tylenol medication with caffeine. I brought all those with me. I can honestly say I am very, very glad I did because they just do not have those. They have like 200 milligram ibuprofen, 200 milligram Tylenol. You cannot buy 500 milligram for the life of you here. And they charge like five to seven dollars for six tablets of ibuprofen or six tablets of Tylenol. And it does not work nearly as efficient because it's 200 milligram instead of the 250 to 500 milligram ones. So if you do come to Asia, I would highly recommend bringing those kind of medications with you as well as like Flovent and Zyrtec and Claritin. The reason being is the yellow dust here in Asia whether you're in Japan, Southeast Asia, Korea, Taiwan, you name it, you're going to have to deal with yellow dust. It's just one of those things. So if you have to deal with yellow dust, the thing that I have found is the headache medication with caffeine that you can buy like the Equate brand or whatever knockoff works fabulously. You can take that like twice a day. It really helps to keep the pressure headaches and sinus problems from being a big problem with the yellow dust. I also run two air purifiers simultaneously in my home office because wherever I'm living. And when I first arrived, I had an air purifier that I just traveled with, but that has since hit the wayside because it got old and tired. But I'm just saying those things are very important. Now, is that something that I'm sitting there going, I wouldn't continue to live here because of the yellow dust? No, because you're going to have things that happen that you don't like about a place. And to me, yellow dust is not something that I'm willing to leave a whole area of the world for, but it is something that you have to figure out how to mitigate. In the same way, when I do have yellow dust, I tend to take Flovent, I tend to take Claritin or Zyrtec knockoff, which I got at Dollar Tree before I left. I have not seen any of those available in the pharmacies I have been in in any country so far. So I'm really glad I brought that with me. The other thing that you cannot get for love nor money in these countries here in Asia is the clothing situation can be interesting. Now, let me explain. I am about six feet tall. I am not an extremely big person, but I am like a size large in the States. Because of that, <laughs> I literally have to buy six sizes bigger than I had to buy in the US. And even then, if I go into any store, they're probably not going to have my size because even if it says that it's the six size bigger size, it is made for someone who has nothing on their front and who has much skinnier arms. Not trying to be bad. It's just because of the the build of people over here in Asia. They are they are much more flat chested typically, and they are much skinnier in their upper arm than I happen to be. The only place that I have been able to find t 
t-shirts, for example, like the one that I'm wearing, is when I was in Taiwan, I went to NET and I went to the men's section. There you can buy these cotton, 100% cotton t-shirts. I bought like six of them when I was in Taiwan. And I also bought the men's jeans. Now, when I went in, I literally had to buy the biggest size of clothing that they have in NET to fit. And again, if I was in the States, I would just be a size large, but there I'm like the biggest size they have. I'm going, this is interesting. They also have a women's department in AT with, again, larger sizes, but the women's department I found to be somewhat problematic for me because again, the arms and I'm not really into the frilly style of shirts and that kind of thing, which is very prevalent in in Asia. So because I tend to not like um, excessive feminine style, that is a problem. Now I have found in the last couple of months, I did go online because the other thing is, is finding like undergarments like bras or underwear or even socks is is difficult because even with the socks, I do have a larger shoe size because again, I'm like six foot tall almost. So because of that, um, it's hard to find that larger shoe sock size. And a lot of the socks are made out of polyester, which the humidity here, like in Southeast Asia and in just like Japan, for example, it's so humid in the summers. It's like, you know, polyester and humidity do not make a nice combination in a sock. So I brought with me when I left the States some diabetic cotton socks, which I actually bought at Dollar Tree and some like mixed fiber blend socks or work boots that I bought at Dollar Tree. I still have those and I am very glad I brought them because the cotton blend dries really fast and they do last a very long time. But I have started to buy clothes directly off of eBay. The reason is Amazon usually charges twice the shipping to ship to somewhere if it's an Asian country that they don't have like an agreement with and they also charge you a customs fee. If I order from eBay, they do not charge custom fee. Often it's free shipping and so that's the route I go with. Like this last month I bought, or in the last couple of months I bought underwear, socks, two dresses, a couple cardigans, a couple shirts. I just, this last week, I decided to go ahead and buy some, um, what do you call them? Oh, some shells, the sleeveless shells I can wear with a cardigan. But if I order from eBay, I can get them and it takes about two to three weeks and I know they will fit. Now the problem is, is sometimes when I order from eBay, it looks nothing like the the picture and even though they say they will fit sometimes they don't because again the Asian sizes are just tricky for me as American and again with my body type it just sometimes works sometimes doesn't the other thing is you can often find tailors and they can make you pants or shirts I have a tailor that I know and they've made me a couple pairs of pants they're gonna make me another pair here this next month it's very reasonable it's like 15 US dollars to have them make a pair of yoga pants. So I just take them the fabric, I tell them my size, they make them. It's much better than trying to buy the pants online because goodness knows if they're going to fit or not. And like I just ordered a pair here about a month and a half ago. They came and they fit terrible and felt horrible because the fabric is nothing like it was supposed to be. <laughs> so those are things that I would definitely bring more clothes with me from the States if I had known better because your clothing does wear out faster because of the humidity here than it does in the States. The other thing is I definitely bring boots and a good raincoat. Those are very important in Asia because of the rainy seasons that you have. It just pours sometimes. So those are things I would bring with me. Other than that, I really haven't needed anything that I cannot get. Now I will say in certain places I've been, I have to ship all the way from China via eBay because they don't have certain things. When I was in Taiwan, I didn't have any trouble with that. But when I've been abroad in like Phuket and the places that I'm now, the other country, I'm like, you know, that 
that area you cannot get everything that I'm used to unless you order from eBay. So that's what I've done. And even then it's like, you know, it takes three weeks and sometimes it doesn't turn out the way that it looked in the picture. But that's something that I'm willing to deal with because it's a small price to pay to live where I've been living and to be able to experience what I've been experiencing. But those are things that I would bring with me. Now, what about the what is the what is when I left the States, there were a bunch of what is that I was worried about. What about this? What about this? What about this? So in the next video, I'm going to talk about the what is check it at the round table. Bye.